Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Hyperconscious Podcast. Alan, what is Hyperconscious? Once you understand why something is the way that it is, now you have the power to change it. Great conversations with great people and great questions are the keys to the kingdom of unlocking your consciousness. Every single action that you do starts as a thought. When you control the way you think, you will control the way you act, and you will control the way you live. That is hyperconscious. Geographically. Geographically. This is cool. So I would say make sure that pretty face is shown. Yes, true. They're going to want to see that <laughs> thing. They're going to want to see that <laughs> thing, Alan. It's that true. face. You good? Ready? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another very special, as always, episode of the Hyperconscious Podcast. If you're listening to this, we hope you enjoyed our latest Small Talks episode where Alan and I talked all about excuses, and we hope that you questioned to yourself, what excuses am I making in my life? Today, we're going to do a Scratching the Surface episode on the journey versus existence. So like we said in the outro for the other episode, if you have these big goals, if you have something that you're really striving for, you want to change the world, you want to change people's lives, whatever it is, then you have a journey. You, you have to get better every day. You have to go out and try to improve. You have to get smarter. You have to become more capable. Where the existence portion of life, where a lot of people are just trying to get by, a lot of people are trying to stay the same in a world that is always changing. If you stay the same and you're stagnant, you're actually going backwards. So I, in one of my speeches, I talk a little bit about something called the magic formula. And I'll break it down very quickly here for all of you. It's three simple steps. Number one, so anyone out there who's ever seen Pirates of the Caribbean? Never. Um, you, have you really not? Nope. Oh, interesting. Okay, so for those <laughs> of it. you who are not living under a rock like yes. Kevin, yes. Um, Jack Sparrow has a compass that points to your heart's deepest desire. And for him, that's the island of De Muerta or whatever. And for the other character, Orlando Bloom's character, it's um, Eliza. No. Look, man, I don't know what you you're don't, talking about. You don't even know. <laughs> no. I'm talking to the wall over here. Um, but it's the woman in the film. Um, I think it's... <laughs> what is her name? I forget. No worries. Okay, so if you were holding that compass in your hands, it would be pointing to your heart's deepest desire. I believe that that's your dreams. That can be a person, place, a thing anything that's on your vision board. It can be your purpose, your mission. And so that's the first step. Getting clear on what you want, what your heart's deepest desire is. The second step is something I call, or Tony Robbins calls, can I? It's C-A-N-I exclamation point. A commitment to constant and never-ending improvement. And then the third step, which I actually um, got when I started working with Kevin, is never quit. So if, ready, ask yourself if you're out there right now, if number one, you know exactly what you want, and number two, you commit to constantly and never-endingly improve in that direction, and you never quit, what is the inevitable result? I would argue that it's a magnificent journey. The people you're going to meet, the fears you're going to uh, face, the skills you're going to develop, the podcasts you're going to listen hey. to. Oh, all right, right, right. Plug. And yeah, right. And that's the thing. Like Arnold Schwarzenegger has this great thing that he always says, which is you can have the best ship in the world with the greatest captain, but if the captain doesn't know where to go, you're just going to drift around. We don't want that for you. We want you to define the game for yourself so that it will force you to embark on an epic journey that's going to be you're going to be proud of. So you might set the timer. You might want to set the timer. And while Alan does that, I am just going to remind you, if you go to the hyperconsciouspodcast.com, click the Join Our Mailing List tab, you will receive our Hyperconscious Morning Minutes Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We will be in your inbox when you wake up to get you started with some motivation. All right, so my intention before this episode was to try to go like old school 
deep. hyper-conscious, deep, philosophical on this. And yeah. this came up the other day because Alan and I were on the phone. I think we talked for an hour and 45 minutes in the middle of my day, which screwed the whole day up for me, <laughs> as it often does. But the more and more that we do, the more and more that we learn, the more and more that we realize it's not... It, the, the most important thing is who you have to become in order to accomplish your dreams and your goals and your purpose. So just for an example, Alan and I were both interviewed on Anthony Truck's podcast, yes. um, Own Your Shift. Ah, uh, ah, uh, shift. Ah, uh, shift. Ah, uh, shift. Oh, he says Own Your Shift is his thing. Oh, does um, he? Yeah. Um, so my initial reaction was, hell no, I don't want to do this because I'm scared. But because I want to be on hundreds of podcasts, that's, that's the journey that I put in the GPS. Mm. I want to be able to motivate and help change millions of lives. And I need to be on other people's podcasts to do that. I need to master that craft. If I was just existing and staying the same, and just trying to stay the same and stay comfortable and avoid feedback and just get through life, I would have said no to that. Yeah. I have no reason to get better. The difference between somebody with a journey and a purpose and a goal and something that they're reaching for and somebody who's just kind of gliding through life is if you're just gliding through life and you think this is as good as it gets, you don't have to change anything. And who could blame you for not changing anything? You feel like you don't have a reason to. Where if you have something that's greater than you, you literally have to become more. You, I will not succeed at the highest levels of public speaking, of podcasting, of coaching, of all of that if I don't continue evolving. Mm. So if you and I stay the same, we lose. We get left behind. Yep. We will not be successful. We will not accomplish our goals. So I understand Alan and I's uh, examples are a little bit maybe more hardcore than yours, but you probably know somebody. Like, think about this for a second. Do you know somebody who is just kind of going through life and they don't really have any wants or desires. They just kind of take what comes. Mm. If you're just taking what comes, you're not, you're not going to be changing. You're not going to be evolving or growing. So... Alan and I truly want for you what we want for ourselves. We want you to feel fulfilled in your life. We want you to be reaching for things greater than you, and that's going to force you to grow and become the person required uh, to accomplish those goals. You hit a uh, heartstring with me right there because I'm going to tell a quick story. I'm going to do it anonymously, but I remember I was on the back porch of one of my good friend's houses, and I remember I asked him, I said, what are your dreams? And... It took him a minute because a lot of people are taken back by that question because if you don't have clarity on what you want, um, usually that question will kind of ruffle some feathers. Mm -hmm. And this person um, told me to start a family, buy a house, and, and basically have a wonderful family. And I said, that's awesome, man. And I do. I, all of those are my dreams as well, 100%. Now, here's, here's the thing. If you're a listener out there and those are part of your dreams like it is for me and I think it is for Kevin as well. Yes, yes. Here's the only downside to that. This person I'm talking about is, I believe, has unbelievable potential. But on his current trajectory, he would quite literally have to change nothing in order to achieve those things. So Jim Rohn says this. If you don't need much then you don't have to become much. It is not about getting the goal. It is what it will force you to become in order to achieve it. So for example, I have three trophies in my room, um, two of which are not first place. Right, dog shit. Right, not good. Um, one of which is first place. But it isn't about the trophies. It's about who I had to become in order to achieve them. For example, I now have seven clients that I help with fitness every single day. And I've been privileged enough to change my own life by changing my fitness habits. And now, because I've learned so much on that journey to try to get those trophies, now I'm able to impart so much more knowledge, experience, and wisdom to my clients in the service of them only because I had the courage to embark on that difficult goal or the journey to attain that difficult goal. Every time I stepped on stage, it was really, really hard. I had anxiety. Um, every time I failed, which was two out of three, it hurt so much. But guess what? Who I became and the lessons I learned on that journey, I now serve others with, and you are the same way. I'm going to try to bring this. So I remember 
what I said, and then you and I were like, yo, this has to be a Scratching the Surface episode for sure. Mm. If you're, I think a lot of people end up on their deathbed, and they look back, and it wasn't a journey for them. It was, this is what my life was. It was, I worked at this job, then I, then I worked at this job for 40 years, and then I retired, and then, you know, it, everything was good. Like, I had a, I had a good life. I, I feel like I accomplished some of the things I wanted to do. Okay, so picture that. Picture you saying that, and then picture this. And I'm going to use Alan and I as an example, because I don't know for you, if you're listening, exactly what your thing is, but this is my thing. This is Alan's thing. Uh, so we were lucky enough to podcast with some of the most successful people that have ever graced this earth. We traveled around the world. We spent a full month in Florida during winter. We missed Christmas because we were working on our online training programs, oh, yeah. the website, getting better. We went to Arizona and saw Brendan Burchard live, and then we were actually lucky enough to have one of the speakers, Anthony Trucks, on our podcast. And then because of that, we were lucky enough to be on his podcast. Right. Uh, we got to podcast with Danielle Murr, who we both both listened to as children on the radio. Yep. We were invited to her house, got to play with her dogs. <laughs> so she has several. She has several. So if you see if you if you hear the difference in that, that could be your life. Mm-hmm. I don't want you to be on your deathbed and, and regret like I just did enough to get by. I don't want that for anybody. And especially if you have something that deep inside of you drives you. It's like, I know I'm capable of this. I know I could you know, create a, a nonprofit, or I want to have a rescue thing for dogs, or I want to I want to have a daycare for underprivileged children. Whatever it is, I think I want you to have that. I want everybody to have what lights them up. I want I don't want this life to just be like a. So many people take it for granted mm. because it's just this is what you have, mm. and it's like okay, I'm supposed to live until I'm ninety. I just got to find a way to get there. No, 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 no. You have to find a way to get better and grow and enjoy every single year because the years make up your life and you, you can't take a year off. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and that's, this might be the thing that fires me up the most. And you, you guys know that if you've heard it, 90 fucking years, you're 90 <laughs> years yes. on this earth if you're lucky. And I don't, I don't want to see you in an unfulfilling relationship or at a shit job or they would literally replace you if you died tomorrow. Like, I don't want that for you. So figure out what, lights you up and what drives you like think about that i don't care if you have to pause us think about what lights you up and what would create an incredible journey where when you're laying in the bed at the end of your life with your family around you and hopefully they'll let you bring your dog in and sit him up on your lap that's a cool thing mm-hmm. that, that you look back and say i had one hell of a journey and not just well you know i existed so kev um to really really drive home and i I firmly believe everything Kevin just said. This is something that I'm unbelievably passionate about as well. Um, what is the mission statement <laughs> of the podcast? Well, I'll try not to screw it up like I did last time. <laughs> um, so, the mission statement is the Hyperconscious Podcast will be the most successful podcast of all time, not just for a life of freedom for Alan and myself, but to prove to countless others that they can live whatever life that they are willing to work for. Okay, so... That mission statement right there, everything that Kevin said about us going to Arizona and Florida and the website and Anthony Trucks and Brendan Burchard and all these incredible guests and all of our relationships with the listeners and the entire journey that we have embarked on together is predicated on that one statement. Without that one statement, none of this would exist. I have a flashcard that I write out every single day. The first line on it is, I am the greatest public speaker, podcaster, and educator to ever live. The second statement is, I am the greatest natural aesthetic men's physique athlete, male model, and fitness coach to ever live. The third statement, and this is my favorite one, I am the greatest master of communication, human connection, and positive influence to ever live. The only reason why Kevin and I are Kevin and I is because of those two statements merging. Okay? The thing that I write on my flashcard and then his mission statement, we are better together. You, we, we plugged something in our GPS way in advance. Brian Tracy has a quote that I must say, and it's one of my absolute favorites. If you do not love what you do enough to want to be the best at it, get out of it like you would a burning building. Kevin and I may or may not 
ever have the quote unquote greatest successful podcast of all time. We we will do whatever we can to be the best we can. Absolutely. It's the desire that we have to do that that will force us to embark on an epic journey where we change millions and millions of lives. You have the power to do that too. You just have to choose in advance. I know this is overwhelming AF. Oh yeah. It takes courage to say, you know what? I'm going to do this. I have a dramatic reading that is not what I had planned, actually. Interesting. A little freestyle. Um, oh, it's going to be a freestyle. I have it memorized. Okay. And it's going to fire you up, Kevin. We're doing it now? No, we don't have to do it right now. Oh, okay. I just I want to build some anticipation. Oh, I like that. Because we got, we got six minutes It's left. very relevant. Okay, we have six minutes. Go ahead, Kev. Um, another thing... I think I, I love to use relationships as an example of this. We've talked about this before. Most people end up in relationships by default. And that's kind of a lot of people's dreams. Like a lot of people's, when you say, like, what do you want to accomplish with your life? I want to be a great husband or a great wife. I want to have three children. I want to be an amazing mother or father and whatever it is, right? I want to, I want to be a positive influence in my children's lives. I think that's amazing. I think that's great. I think that's great. But what are you doing to make sure that you're going to be that? Mm. What are you proactively doing? Are you reading books about relationships? Are you reading books about, you know, intimacy and love and intimacy? The five love languages? Are you reading that? Like, if you really, really want to get, if, if that's what you've set into your GPS, mm. that, I want to be the best parent and the best lover and supporter of my husband or wife ever, and I want them to know that I'm their ride or die and I will be there no matter what. What are you doing every day? Right. Or are you just assuming when that comes along, it's going to work? Because I think a lot of people are just taking the next turn mm -hmm. with life. I, oh, I lost my job, and this would be an awesome time for me to... I have some money in the bank. This would be an awesome time for me to take some time for myself, maybe do some shit that I'm passionate about and see if I can, if I can really get onto something. Or jump to another job because that's the normal thing to do. And I understand, like Alan said, I know this is overwhelming, and... Mm -hmm. The only reason Alan and I are so clear on this is because we've been talking about shit like this <laughs> every for, day for two years. Yeah, for a yeah. long time. <laughs> but this is the thing that fires me up the most. This is the thing that got me out of the right. darkest times, out of a normal job, out of a normal existence. Guys, I didn't know what I was going to do for the rest of my life. Every week, I had a moment last, what's today, Monday, last night, um, I was talking to the beautiful woman that I am, I am talking to and spending time with, and she said, what are you grateful for? And I said, it's 9.30 on a Sunday. I would probably be halfway to New Jersey by now if it was two years ago. And I'd be miserable too. Mm -hmm. And I was burning down last night. You know that. Mm -hmm. I was going through some shit last night. So that's the only reason that changed is because I said, I'm not happy with this existence I'm living. I want a journey. And what do I need for a journey? I need a destination. So I plugged that, that bitch into the GPS and we're riding. You can do that too. You just got to soul Fired search up. and figure out what you want in advance. So, Kev, um, prior to you finding your thing, mm -hmm. the podcast, you were just existing. Oh, yeah. So for someone who might feel like they're in that spot right now, what is some practical examples of things that they can do to figure out their thing? If you're listening to this podcast, I think that is a great step. And if it's not us... Make sure it's somebody who inspires you. Like, make sure it's somebody who inspires you. I hope it's us, and I'm, it means the world to me if it is. But if it's not, listen to somebody who does. Because you need to get around people who are kind of thinking like you want to think. It's easy to be around people who think like you think. But you're only going to get that. So get around people who are thinking the way that you want to think. Also, realize that the possibilities are truly endless when you're willing to put in the effort. You're not probably not going to be good at whatever you start at first. Go back to episode one where I interviewed Alan. It's terrible. It's not good. <laughs> but there's a reason we left it up. Neither one of us no, is, we, is good. No, but we would never get here if we didn't do exactly. that. Exactly. That will never leave. Like I will always make sure that episode one is there so you guys can go back. And that'll be ultimate proof so that like, oh, you guys just weren't. You, you weren't like born for this? No, I was, I don't know what I was born to do. <laughs> right. I, I was existing for a long time and I realized like, I think I'm born to help people. Welcome back to the motherfucking. Yeah. Well, I, I, edited the, I edited that out so it's not there anymore. But I think some practical things are what lights you up? And like, what really lights you up that you think you could construct a life around? Like, I used to say if I won the lottery, I would do nothing. That's not mm. a good indication of where I was as a person. Of course, I didn't know what I wanted to do, right? So also reverse engineer. If 
if you could be at the end of a month where you had the greatest month of your life and you were super fulfilled and you feel like you accomplished so much and maybe it's helping people, whatever it is for you, what would that month look like? Would you have traveled? Would you have coached people one-on-one? Would you have done speeches? Would you have rescued animals? Would you have uh, done a food blog or a travel blog where you take pictures? Like, get creative because the, the place that we are now, technology has created an industry where you can make money by doing anything. Like, literally anything. All of the barriers to entry are gone if you have an internet connection and a device that can that, that can um, get posts up and, and different things like that. Get your message out there. The one thing that I do want to say, though, is that it's not supposed to be easy. And the fact that it's not going to be easy is going to force you to grow emotional muscle that you wouldn't have had otherwise. The other thing I want to say is this. Um, the barrier to entry is completely gone if you have an internet connection and, uh, and technology. But the comp- competition is definitely way, sure. way, way for up. Sure. Um, and therefore, your, your striving for excellence needs to be there. You, like, how bad do you want it? And that's going to... I can't even tell you guys how many times I've sat there in failure. I'll be very transparent right now. I suck at Instagram. I'm, f- I'm fucking terrible at Instagram. And I've been working, if I could give you the amount of hours that I've spent trying to add value to you guys on Instagram, it's, it's literally years. And I am not winning. But no one will outfail me. I will not stop trying, ever. No matter what it takes. I can't, I, I've put up thousands of posts. And there's the timer. I've put up thousands of posts, and I'm still terrible at Instagram. I don't know. I just won't stop until I'm good at it because that's a platform where I know I can add massive value and help people get in shape and help inspire people and help get people to this podcast. And if you're out there, it's not going to be easy, but you really have to want it bad enough. And that's something that my dramatic reading will make clear. A little positive self-talk there on a, on a Friday. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> I want to I wanna bring this to the listeners really quickly before you do your dramatic reading. I was very pulled to do this. So as Alan was saying this, like, yes, it's going to be hard for sure. This is the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life, right? But if you're watching this or you listen to us every week, if you are signed up to the mailing list and you get our our emails Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, or better yet, if you work one-on-one with one of us, that means you want this. Mm -hmm. That means you are willing to face your fears, you're willing to get out of your comfort zone, and you're willing to grow, learn, and evolve towards your goals, right? So I understand it is difficult, it's going to continue to be difficult, but... I do admire the fact that you guys listen to us and you take advice from us and you reach out to us and maybe you're a a client of ours, whatever it is. That means you're in the right place. You're doing the right things. It's of course it's going to be hard, but I think that you're doing the right thing if you're taking us along for the journey. So I just wanted to say that. Yeah. Thank you for that. It, It means the world to us that you're on our team and we really do feel like it's a team. Like every single time someone reaches out to me, I'm so grateful. Like it's unbelievable. So I'm going to do a dramatic reading, and this is something that I have memorized, actually, because I say this to myself literally whenever I'm down. Um, And here we go. It's from Les Brown, and I heard it once in a speech, and I memorized it because it's fire. If you want a thing bad enough to go out and fight for it, to work day and night for it, to give up your time, your peace, and your sleep for it, if all that you dream and scheme is about it, and life seems useless and worthless without it, if you'd gladly sweat for it and fret for it and plan for it and lose all your terror of the opposition for it, if you'll simply go after that thing that you want with all your capacity, strength and sagacity, faith, hope, confidence, and stern pertinacity, if neither cold, poverty, famish, or gaunt, nor sickness or pain of body and brain can keep you away from that thing that you want, if darker than grim you besiege and beset it, With the help of God, you'll get it. Folks, how bad do you want it? It's scary when you care, because that's when it hurts when you fail. Mistakes are proof you're trying. When you're going after something you really want, that's where all your power is, but it's going to hurt a little bit. But when you get hurt, you're going to retool and you're going to learn so much more than you ever would if you never failed. So, figure out what you want the person that you want, the vision that you want, the career that you want, the family that you want, and go after it as if your life depends on it. Because it does. Because it literally does. Yeah.
This is a fire episode. I enjoyed recording this. It was good. Um, I want you guys, as I always do, I try to get you to think, and Alan does the same thing. Think about what that life would look like. Think about if you were on your deathbed and you looked back and said, I had an extraordinary journey. I thrived. I grew. I evolved. I learned so much. The person that I became makes me so proud. Like, that's the life. That is a life. That is a life, not an existence. And we want you to, to live your best life. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you listened and enjoyed this episode as much as we enjoyed recording. Up next, we have a, a relationship deep oh, yeah. episode with Mr. Spike Spencer. He is the husband of Kimberly Spencer, who we had on last Sunday. Yes. So with Spike, he is a voiceover actor. Yes. And we had him do some of his favorite crazy voices. This was honestly one of my favorite episodes to date especially when it comes to him talking a little bit about the masculine and feminine energies and the intimacy. You asked him a question, and this will be the last thing I say, about the three words that matter most in a relationship. And I think he said, number one, communication. Number two um, was listening. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then number three was decision. decision yeah. And that was fascinating. So we went deep on decision making, which was huge. If you have ever struggled in a relationship, this is the episode for you. If you're going to be in a relationship or you are in one now, trust me, this is the episode for you. Alan and I learned so much that we are going to use in our personal lives. It was actually, uh, we got to scratch our own itch for, for a little bit. So uh, we hope you will enjoy that episode and we will talk to you later. Talk to you soon. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for listening to another episode of the Hyperconscious Podcast. Going hyperconscious will absolutely change your life because if you understand why something is the way it is, now you have the power to change it. If you going hyperconscious with us has changed your life in any way, please share this episode with one of your friends because the more people that go hyperconscious, the better this world's going to be for everybody. And if you would kindly leave us a five star review on iTunes, that would help us make more people hyperconscious and we would be greatly appreciative. Thank you. Bye.